Now when I'm checking for the head gaskets or an EGR cooler, what I've done is I've just taken a uh, one of my uh, fuel pressure testers here. I've taken a T and splice it in the hose here. And I just transfer this hose from truck to truck um, and I keep using it over and over. That way I don't mutilate the customer's hose. And also when I do it this way, I've checked the, uh, I can check the cap, the degas bottle, check the entire system, the way it works. When your pressure builds up over 16, it actually takes probably about 18 PSI. It'll vent out the cap and you start to see signs of it here. And some of the things I've found that when you have a head gasket, it's the pressure slowly builds. It'll take maybe three or four hard excels or maybe a long grade and the pressure will rise to over 16. Um, 17 whatever it may be and then if it's if it'll right and it also takes time to bleed off if you have it to where as soon as you hit the throttle and your pressure comes up quickly then it's probably an EGR cooler EGR coolers usually crack more um, actually the crack will let it build up quickly where the head gasket's just a slow seep and the only exception to that is if you have some of those black onx head gaskets that were crap the um and they, 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 I've seen those so bad that you build up pressure instantly. So that's one of the ways I can uh, maybe help you out there if you're looking for a head gasket or an EGR cooler and pressure checking and testing the system. That's one of the ways I do it. You also have to make sure that your fan's working and um, that you have coolant in there. Water will absorb the heat um, quicker. And of course, if your fan's not working properly, then the, just like a pressure cooker, the pressure will rise and rise so you have to make sure you don't have other issues you know don't condemn your head gaskets or your EGR cooler until you're sure that you have the the right mixture of coolant in there it should be about a 50 50 mixture and also that your fans working properly and um, the, the average pressures that I see out here I'm in the desert southwest normally 12 I would say is probably an average maybe 9 on the low side 13 on the high side I start to question it once I start to see 14 or 15. And then again, I just uh, take the uh, end hose here where I've spliced in, and I'll run it through here, make sure it doesn't make contact with the battery cable, of course. And then I'll go through the hood gap here and then tape it to the windshield. And that way I can monitor the pressures while I'm going down the road and try to determine what's going on, along with doing the temperatures and everything else. Just getting off the highway again here I have the oil that's 20 degrees above the water temperature so that is a failed restricted oil cooler but what I'd like to show is when you're going down the road at the higher RPMs you create more heat and it's the oil getting hot with not enough water flowing through it that causes the oil temperature to rise driving them around town you will never see your oil temperature get out of specs. At least I've never seen it. I mean, I suppose it's possible if it's really bad, but normally you have to drive them the higher RPMs for maybe 10 to 20 minutes before you see it, the, pressure, the temperatures get changed. What I'm showing here is at the lower speeds, if I was going stop to stop, you can see that the temperatures get closer and that's what you find. 
So to do an accurate test, you need to get it out on the highway and open it up and see what, what happens. With the newer oil coolers, I'm only seeing maybe three to six degrees difference, even towing in the middle of summer out here where it could be 120 degrees outside. So make sure you set your scan gauge up and monitor and check them correctly. And then you can see the how it affects it, how the RPM affects it. Thank you.